What's up you guys, Matt McAdam, your truck editor at Driving Line with another episode of Chasing Dust. This is the first episode of 2020 and I've got an awesome new project to show you guys. What we got here is a 1999 Ford E350 Super Duty cargo van. This van came originally from Ford with the 7.3 liter power stroke diesel engine. I'm very excited about this build. I've spent the last couple of days doing some renderings. It's not really slow. It's sure as hell not fast. Woo. And voila. So here is the mobile media machine. What's up you guys, Matt McAdam, your truck editor at Driving Line with another episode of Chasing Dust. It is 2020, happy new year, happy holidays. I know we haven't seen each other since then, but this is the first episode of 2020 and I've got an awesome new project to show you guys. I'm out here at Bolsa Chica State Beach here in Southern California, uh, Orange County. This is uh, one of the, the biggest surf spots around here in SoCal. And uh, there's a reason why I'm here to show you guys this new project. For a couple of years now, I've been trying to solve a problem that I've had with off-road and camping and whatnot. Obviously, you guys know what I do. I'm editor for Driving Line. I do a lot of media uh, work that requires me to be out in the middle of nowhere and uh, do some camping, do a lot of off-roading, and just really be able to live somewhere off the grid for a couple of days, sometimes longer, like King of the Hammers. We're there for about eight days. It's always a struggle to find a a solution for a comfortable place to sleep and work out of uh, that can make it to these remote destinations. I've tried a few different options. Obviously, tent camping is where I started out. That's where a lot of us start out. Basically, just bringing a tent out there with you when you go off-roading, setting it up whenever you get to your spot, go wheeling, come back. But you know, a tent is great when the weather's nice, but when it's cold, when it's windy, it's pretty miserable. I know a lot of you guys could probably uh, relate to that. So. Another method that I've tried is with a truck camper on my uh, my old Ford F-250. I had a 96 F-250 that had a camper on it. That was nice for a couple of trips, but really it was a cumbersome setup because I had to you know take the camper off when I was driving around town. It was my daily driver, so it was hard to, to keep taking it off and putting it back on every weekend. And you know, it was kind of old and it had a little bit of you know problems that had leaks here and there. So that, that was kind of a a good solution for the time being, but it wasn't something that I could sustain for a long time. But there is one method that I've wanted to explore for the last five years or so. I've been thinking about doing this and I just never really, you know, had the courage to pull the trigger on one and try to build it. But what I'm talking about is a van. Uh, obviously camper vans have been around for a long, long time, been used by many different kinds of hobbyists and people who just like the outdoors. Uh, obviously surfer vans are a big thing. I'm out here at, at one of the biggest surf spots in Southern California, Bolsa Chica, right next to Huntington Beach, uh, which is Surf City USA. So surfer vans, camper vans, you know, that sort of thing has been really cool um, because a lot of times you can tow a vehicle behind a van if it's got the power and you can live out of it uh, for you know a couple of days when you're out camping somewhere. So I've always been kind of intrigued by that solution to off-road camping, but it's something I never really pulled the trigger on. I was scared, you know, they're expensive to build, you know, they're difficult. They don't look all that great. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of uh, the way vans look in general, but then I started doing some research and seeing how some people are building them and you can modify the suspension and put bigger tires on them and they actually look pretty cool. So before I go any further, I wanna show you guys this new project that I just picked up uh, actually last week. So I'm really excited to get this build going and I'm really excited to see what I can do with this vehicle. Let's check it out. All right, so what we got here is a 1999 Ford E350 Super Duty cargo van. Now, I'm gonna explain to you a little bit of the differences between the vans here in a minute, but this one is a short wheelbase uh, or short, body, I guess you can call it, 
Uh, it doesn't have the extended body behind the rear axle like some of the extended vans you might see out there. And the cargo van is designated because it doesn't have any windows in it. It's basically just a panel van. Uh, the back doesn't have any windows. The side door doesn't have any windows. It's just got the two front windows uh, for the passenger and the driver and of course the windshield. Um, and this van I actually found about five minutes from my house. It was really close. It was on Craigslist and I went to go see it and you know, the first time I went and saw it, it looked really clean. It didn't have any, you know, dings or any scrapes or nothing on the sides or the back. The bumpers were in good shape. It had newer tires on it. It was uh, overall really, really, you know, nicely kept up van, especially considering it's over 20 years old. But really the, the drawing point for me, uh, the most attractive part of this van is something you can't even see from the outside, but I'll explain it to you. This van, came originally from Ford with the 7.3 liter Power Stroke diesel engine. The 7.3 liter Power Stroke was the first Power Stroke engine that Ford had produced and put in their vehicles. It was actually built by International Navistar uh, and they started out in 1994 and then they uh, put them in all the vehicles, the trucks and the vans uh, up until 2003 when they switched over to the 6 liter which is uh, a whole different engine. So the 7.3 liter is known for being uh, one of the most reliable diesel engines ever produced. Uh, they're actually nicknamed the Million Mile Motor. Uh, really, really simple design, very, very big displacement. I mean, 444 cubic inches. And there's not a whole lot to them. The injectors are fired on high pressure oil. Uh, it's, it's pretty solid as far as an engine platform goes. And uh, I've actually owned four of them now, several over 300,000 miles and still going totally fine and strong. So I knew that having a 7.3 liter van would be awesome because A, it's super reliable, you don't have to worry about a whole lot, especially when you're out in the middle of nowhere, and B, they also have a towing capacity of about 10,000 pounds uh, behind the van. So I could tow my Toyota pickup and a trailer everywhere I go and be able to camp out of this thing once it's fully built. So really, really, good platform you don't see a very uh, very many of these vans out there the 73 vans uh, are very rare nowadays and when you do find them they're usually pretty beat up and they're just not in good shape at all or they have like you know a whole lot of miles on them so this vehicle does have just over 300,000 miles on it but like I was mentioning before they call this the million mile motor I'm not really worried about the mileage on this engine there are some other components to this vehicle that do age faster with miles like this uh, and I'll get into that later on but for now uh, it, it drives perfectly fine I've been driving for about a week now I probably have about 300 miles on it since I bought it and so far no hiccups at all it's uh, shifting fine it brakes very very well uh, good steering, doesn't really wander on the highway. So overall, I'm very happy with the purchase. Now, as you guys can tell, right behind me here is the interior of the van and it's completely empty. I mean, there's nothing in this thing. The difference between the cargo vans and the passenger vans is that the passenger vans obviously have seats. They have usually three rows of seats in them and uh, actually four for the extended ones. I think they have four rows of uh, bench seats in there. And they have molding in the sides and they have you know a header panel. Uh, they have carpet, you know, they have all the, the nice things that you would want inside of a van that's made to carry 12 people. Uh, air conditioning, vents in the back, heater vents, you know, there's, there's all the creature comforts, but these cargo vans, um, don't have any of that. They don't even have windows. Uh, they're basically just a big box attached to the front of uh, a van that's got a 7.3 liter power stroke in it. After doing a lot of research on camper vans, I realized that a lot of people like to start out with the vehicles that were passenger vans because they already have windows in them. They already have ducts lined up for the air conditioning. They've already got, you know, all the wiring set up, the carpets in place, the molding is there on the sides. But, you know, for me, and seeing what I wanted to do with the interior of this vehicle, um, it became more and more apparent to me that having a van like this, a cargo van that's got literally nothing in it, completely stripped out, it doesn't even have carpet in the front where the passenger and driver sit, uh, it, it's, it's a blank canvas. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's basically just a fresh start to do whatever I want to do. I can put a window wherever I want to put in this thing. It doesn't already have any windows in it. I can do whatever. I can, I can line the sides with insulation. I can put wood on the side panels. I can build a wood, uh, you know, header panel up there. So there's a, there's a lot of cool things and a lot of really creative ideas out there 
uh, from people who are building vans. I honestly hadn't explored it until I was getting ready to buy this thing and, and I was amazed at the wealth of information and the wealth of different builds and customization and, and people's creativity that go into building a camper van. I'm really, really happy that I got into that because it's shown me a whole new side of vehicle building that I'd never really been exposed to before. Um, it's kind of like a cross between building a truck and building a house. I'm getting a little bit older, admittedly, and uh, you know, building uh, my dwelling where I live, my home, has, has taken a little bit more uh, precedence over some of the other things in my life, and I actually like it. I take pride in, in do-it-yourself projects around the house and, and making your living space a comfortable, nice spot that's uniquely your own. And it's really cool that building a van like this is, is kind of like a cross between that and then my lifelong hobby of building cars and trucks. I mean, there's just a million different ways to build build one of these vans and you'll never find two of them alike. So that's, that's a really cool uh, thing about this, uh, I guess you can call it van life. That's the new hashtag and the buzzword, right, is van life. Uh, it seems to be trending among uh, young people who are buying up these old vans and kind of outfitting them the way they want to and then exploring and traveling the world uh, with these vehicles and just kind of documenting their day-to-day -day life of living out of a van and traveling around and you know going all over the place and going across continents even so it's uh, it's become kind of a, a culture of its own among young people to have these social media accounts about their life living out of a van like I was mentioning earlier I have a lot of really great plans for this um, a lot of them are gonna be revolving around my work uh, because obviously I do a lot of media work. I do a lot of editing, uh, writing, and things like that while I'm out there in the dirt, while it's fresh in my mind, it's ready to go. I usually bring a laptop or a computer with me and I'll start going at it and working really hard while I'm still out in the dirt. Um, and that's always been a challenge for, uh, for me because I never had a comfortable place to, to camp and work out of. I mean, can you just imagine sitting on the floor of a tent with your laptop trying to edit some, some photos or put a video together? It just, it doesn't make a lot of sense, especially for somebody like me who's always on the move. Um, so this is, uh, I hope, gonna be a really good solution to that problem that I've been having for a while. Uh, this could be an office, it could be a home, it could be a tow vehicle, all in one. Um, I may even start daily driving this thing if I like it. I mean, the 7.3 is a, a pretty, beefy motor and it's a lot of fun to drive around town and you know who doesn't like a big clocky diesel if you can't tell by the tone of my voice I'm very excited about this build uh, so much so that I've spent the last couple of days doing some renderings for this van uh, both on the interior and the exterior to see a few possibilities of what it could look like once the build is finished and uh, the way I want it. And the great part is I haven't even settled on the design yet. So I have a few different ideas that I put together, a few different end results, but they're back home on my computer. So let's hop in this thing, fire it up, get out of here. The beach is nice today, but we got work to do. Gotta love that 7.3 diesel sound. Just clack, 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 clack. He's got back windows, though. I'm kind of jealous. I gotta tell you, man, driving this thing around town, the kind of looks you get from people are is a complete 180 from the kind of looks I got driving my Crown Victoria. I mean, you might as well be invisible driving a white van around town that has no windows and then nobody even sees you. I'm gonna try to give it all the beans here and see how she does. And like I was saying, it's not really slow, it's sure as hell not fast. That's full power. Woo. 
It's okay, I guess. It gets up to 60 pretty quick, but keep in mind, this thing is completely stripped down. It is as bare bones as it can get. So that's gonna change as soon as you start adding a bunch of weight, you know, and interior stuff here, bigger tires, all that's gonna go out the door. What little power it has now is gonna be gone. Luckily for me, the 7.3 has a lot of options for upgrading and getting more power out of these vehicles, even with just as simple as a tuner. All right guys, we're back here at my studio and I wanted to show you guys a little bit of what I have planned for this van in terms of the overall design, both on the outside and on the inside. So you guys might remember from a previous episode where I actually did a rendering for a Jeep Gladiator. Um, I do these on Photoshop for friends, I do them for myself. It's a really good way to visualize how you want a vehicle to turn out after you make some modifications to it or actually do a full build from start to finish. But enough talk, let's take a look at this render and see what I was able to come up with. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and this is a image that I pulled off of Google. It's just a stock van. Now you might notice this has uh, the newer front end on it. This is the 08 and up uh, E350 platform. But uh, the reason I did that is because I plan to at some point convert my front end to look like this anyway. So I figured why spend the extra time photoshopping this and just, uh, you know, find a stock image of a van that's already got it. So that's where we start off with this model. Otherwise, it's the same. It's the short uh, short body van, no windows, uh, you know, basic tires and wheels. It's basically what I have now. Um, obviously, you can't tell if it's a diesel or a gas, but that's not important for this purpose. Uh, and then, by the time I was done with the entire Photoshop render process, it looked completely different. <laughs> so to show you guys what it looked like after I was done with the rendering, it probably took me about four hours to get it finished. Uh, I'm gonna show you right here. We're just gonna turn on all these layers and voila. So here is what I call the mobile media machine. Uh, and obviously I'm calling it that because I plan to create off-road media out of this van and of course it's mobile and uh, it's gonna be a home base for both camping and for working out of when I'm out in the desert. So just the name kind of just fit for me. Um, kind of came up with this little design here. Obviously the Desert Chief uh, logo up there. And you can see I kind of did a little desert livery on this. Um, these are supposed to look like sand dunes and you got some different cacti here, desert plants, and even a little coyote howling at the moon just for fun. So. Uh, obviously, this looks nothing like the original van. There's a lot of changes that have been made here. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of them with you guys just to show you visually what has changed on this van uh, in Photoshop and kind of, you know, what I planned, the direction that I plan to go in. Not to say this is going to be the final design. By no means is, is this final. Um, this is just one direction that I think I'm going to be going with. And, uh, and we'll see how it pans out. I'm sure a lot of things are gonna change over the course of building this vehicle. But uh, doing something like this kind of just gets me excited about getting it started. So, <clears throat> starting out, uh, obviously you can see it's a little bit higher off the ground than the factory van. Uh, so I did raise the body up off the chassis a little bit, give it a little bit of a lift. Um, and this is, <clears throat> probably the most debated part of this vehicle for me internally is how I plan on lifting these vans. Obviously, these things can't fit a big tire under them with stock suspension, and they're also two-wheel drive. So there's a couple different ways of thinking about how to build one of these vans. A lot of people are gonna tell you that you have to build a four-wheel drive, no exceptions. You have to do the solid axle swap on there. Some people will tell you to do the, the twin traction beam, which keeps it as an independent beam suspension, but with four wheel drive. Uh, and then there's other people that say, you don't even need four wheel drive. Um, you can accomplish most of what you want to do out there with just two wheel drive. And to be honest with you, I'm leaning towards that direction more than the other two. I'll tell you why. 
Um, this is not going to be an adventure vehicle for me. Uh, like you've seen some of those other van builds out there, like the sportsmobiles that you'll find doing, you know, three, 400 miles of dirt in a weekend, you know, down in Baja or something like that. That's not necessarily the type of build that I'm going for here. Uh, I've already got my 91 Toyota pickup four wheel drive. That thing is built to go off road and that is my primary off-road vehicle. So I don't really have any intentions of building an off-road van uh, that's got a big diesel engine in it that's really heavy and you know cumbersome on small tight trails. It's just not my thing. So I am just looking for something that can tow my off-road vehicle out to the desert and then act as a home base when I'm out there to be able to live out of comfortably and work out of it and just have a cool spot to hang out when I'm not riding the trails with my Toyota. With that being said, yes, it is going to be, you know, having, it has to be able to get to these remote destinations. And most of the time where we camp is miles from the nearest pavement. Uh, but usually it's just like a fire road going into wherever we're headed, whether it's Johnson Valley, whether it's, you know, other parts of the Mojave Desert, uh, you know, up in the mountains, it's usually just a, a fire road or a mountain mountain road to get to wherever our campsite's going to be at. Uh, very, very rarely have I ever camped somewhere that a two-wheel drive tow vehicle like this could not get to. Uh, there are exceptions, like some parts of the Mojave Road, where you want something that's more nimble and easy to off-road, uh, and you want to camp overnight in the middle of you know, the trail, which is like 130 miles, like we were just talking about last time on the last episode. Um, yeah, there's some times where you want to camp somewhere in the, literally the middle of nowhere and you can't get a big, you know, diesel tow rig that's two wheel drive out there very easily. Um, for those times, it's better to just suck it up and bring a tent. And I think that uh, I've been doing that long enough to know exactly how to do it the right way and pack light and make sure that the truck isn't overloaded with all kinds of stuff I don't really need. So that's okay. For those times, I will camp on the ground. I still love camping. I just don't want to be doing it for days on end where it's really hard to get things done. So going back to <laughs> what this van looked like before I started messing with it, I mean, that's a pretty drastic difference here, as you guys can see. Uh, one looks very, very creeper. I mean, this is like one of those freak handy vans that you tell your kids not to go near. <laughs> and the other one is something that everyone stares at going down the road. They're like, whoa, that thing is awesome. Looks like it can go anywhere. So I'm really excited just after finishing this rendering to get this going because I'm tired of driving that creepy looking van that's parked out front right now. But I think with just a lift, wheels, and tires alone makes a world of a difference for how you know, to uncreepify that van that's out there. Now moving on to the interior, uh, I created another kind of Photoshop drawing here. Um, first of all, this bottom section here is a illustration that I borrowed from Google. Uh, this is a great illustration. It's the only one that I found that applies to my van. Uh, it is all the interior dimensions from where the, the cage is normally installed on these uh, basically showing you all of the uh, dimensions for the cargo area of this van, not including the front seats, uh, which is exactly what I needed because I needed to see what I could fit and uh, you know where everything is going to go. That really helped me kind of build a mostly two scale model of the interior of this van. So I know it's going to be kind of hard to imagine just by looking at this drawing here, but think of this as a top down view of the van itself. You've got your driver door here, passenger door here. You've got the side doors that open up like the barn doors and then the back doors that open up like barn doors as well. Uh, and then you have a finite amount of space to work with in here to you know make it workable and livable. So what I kind of opted for was a, a couch bed or some people may call it a jackknife bed, some people call it a futon, whatever you want to call it. It starts off as a couch or it starts off as a bed and then it can fold into a couch or a bed. So you can start it out as like a nice leather couch you'd see like in an RV and you pull it up and it flattens out into a bed. This is a 72 inch model here, which is the biggest one I could find uh, that does that. And a lot of people you'll find in their van builds will put their beds towards the back of the van and they'll sleep sideways in the van. 
doesn't work for me. I'm six foot two, so I'm actually taller than the width of the van. So any way, any way that you put a bed in there, no matter how big you want to fit a bed in the back of that van, I don't fit in it sideways. So I have to sleep long ways. Uh, this is a six foot long bed, which is just two inches shy of my total height, but I can probably live with that for a couple of nights. So this is a, a couch that seats three people during the day. At night, it comes out to here and it sleeps one, possibly two people. Um, there is a little bit of floor space here, obviously more when the couch is in the couch position. Uh, I've added a cabinet here just next to the door where I'll put my computer, the one that you're looking at right here. Um, it's my 27 inch iMac. I'll make a station there for uh, plug-in power so this thing can run and I can you know, have it secured so it doesn't fall over while I'm driving. And uh, you can see over the couch, there's a little slide out here with a simulated keyboard and a mouse pad. And that's where I'm gonna be doing most of my work is sitting on this couch here, staring at my computer screen across the van and getting my work done. So that kind of solves my workstation uh, needs right there. All I needed is a nice, comfortable place to sit down and put my mouse and keyboard and just basically work off the computer. So that's all I need, it's pretty simple. This is probably the easiest way of doing it. Um, as far as the other things needed to camp out of a van, uh, I've added that towards the back of the van. Uh, and the, really the reason for that is because the rear doors are make everything so accessible from the outside. Uh, and I borrowed a few design elements from other uh, camping vehicles that I've seen in the past. So the back here is gonna have a counter where one side is a little bit taller than the other. Uh, the driver's side of the counter is gonna have the fridge freezer there. I've used an ARB fridge in the past, but I'm gonna be looking at some other fridge freezers to see what I can find. Uh, they'll have some counter space so they can cut vegetables, you know, make a sandwich, whatever I wanna do. Uh, and then underneath that will be a drawer slide out that's the same width and length of the cabinet itself. And that will come out for kitchen appliances, for you know, uh, cookware, or whatever else I may need. On the other side where it's raised up a little bit, the reason for it being raised up is so that you can put a sink inside of it and still have a full drawer underneath the same size as the one on the other side. Uh, the sink will have a, a water jug with about five or 10 gallons of water, which is pumped through an electric pump uh, to a faucet. So wash hands, wash, wash vegetables, clean dishes, whatever I gotta do very easy and then uh, that will, because it's not technically black water, I'm just gonna dump it out to a drain, super easy to clean out. And I'm gonna have another smaller drawer above the one that's underneath it for my Coleman stove. It's a two burner, runs on propane. I've had it for years and it's never let me down. So I'm gonna keep using that thing. I'm just gonna put it inside of a drawer so I can slide it out, open it up, get to cook in when I'm done, clean it up, close it, put, it back, put the drawer back in. Real easy, really simple. And that is pretty much it for the inside. I mean, you got somewhere to sleep, you got somewhere to cook food, you got somewhere to keep your food, and you have some storage spaces for camera gear or clothes or whatever you're gonna need uh, when you're out there camping for a couple of days. So this is the interior model for the mobile media machine. And I don't exactly know how I'm gonna build all this because I'm not a carpenter by any means. I'm pretty lousy when it comes to woodworking, but I do have a lot of resources around me and a lot of good people who have reached out and offered to help me out with stuff like this. So uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be calling on them to give me a hand when it comes to building out the interior on this thing because honestly, I really have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm pretty good at designing it. I'm horrible at putting it together. All right guys, well, that pretty much wraps things up for us today here on Chasing Dust. I'm really, really excited to show you what I got going on with this van and how the build kind of progresses over the next you know, X number of months. I don't know how long this is gonna to take to build it. I've never built something like this before in my life, so it's definitely a first for me, uh, but I'm happy to bring you guys along on this journey and I really, really hope that you guys can give me some cool ideas for what I can do with this thing because there's a ton of ways to build these vans and, uh, and I'm all ears, you know, I wanna learn the right way of doing things and any tips and tricks that I can pick up along the way is gonna be a huge, huge asset to the process of building this fan. The mobile media machine, super, super excited to get this thing on the road because it's gonna be 
so much more comfortable than everything else that I've had to camp out of and work out of for you know days or weeks on end out in the dirt. I know this time around on this episode we didn't do anything cold. There was you know minimal driving. Didn't go out to the desert. Didn't do any off roading. But I promise you guys that in the next episode we're going to be doing something totally different, very cool. So in case you guys still haven't subscribed to us yet, hit that big subscribe button down there, ring that bell so you guys are notified every time we have a new video coming out. We have a lot of really cool series, a lot of cool videos that we're producing here at Driving Line, and we're very excited to share with you guys some of the awesome content that we have lined up for 2020. So thank you guys for watching. I'm your truck editor at Driving Line, Matt McAdam, aka Desert Chief. I'll see you on the next one.